Welcome to Entrepreneur State of Mind. I'm your host, Dr. Dale Caldwell, and I have my second guest, someone who is the epitome of entrepreneurship, Mike Ferraro from Bridging the Gap. Mike, welcome to Entrepreneur State of Mind. Uh, Dale, thank you so much for having me on. It's a pleasure to see you again and, and be part of the show. Well, well, I, I owe you a debt of gratitude because I was on uh, a, a, a military show that you had, and you introduced me to RVN TV, and here I am hosting uh, hosting this show. And so um, I want to, I always like to start with the origins of, of folks because I wrote this book, Intelligent Influence, and we're all products of our influence. Where were you born and what branch of the military were you involved in and, and how did you get to starting Bridging the Gap? So, so I was born in Queens, New York, but we migrated to uh, Howell Township in New Jersey, Monmouth County, uh, around 1968, somewhere around there. Mm -hmm. So went to grade school, high schools, and so forth. Uh, graduated in 1982 from high school. Joined the military immediately while I was a senior in high school. And, and then uh, delayed enlistment. I was, as soon as I graduated, boom, I was in the United States Air Force as a, a F-15 aircraft mechanic. Mm. And so that took me um, around the country. And then one of the bases was overseas in the Netherlands. So I lived in Holland for five years. Mm. Came back in uh, early 87, went to flight school to fly on cargo planes as a flight engineer and uh, large transports. And uh, that gave me a, a, an incredible uh, life and privilege to be able to fly around the world and meet some incredible people and, and places, great memories. And then um, I stayed focused in the Air Force Reserves uh, during that time frame. And, uh, I, and, and back in like 1991, uh, that's when I transitioned over to being a, uh, a reservist. Okay. But, uh, I worked for Blues Allen and Hamilton as a management consultant for about eight years. And, um, and then I was into uh, uh, dealing with the military. I was on long-term orders a lot of times because I was constantly getting promoted. Mm. And uh, towards, my, towards the late 90s, I started becoming a first sergeant and then, uh, and then the chief command, chief master sergeant in the early 2000s and that gave me opportunity to travel around the world again and this time i was in a different position i was higher rank right and um and, and really help a lot of airmen and their families with their careers mm -hmm. so so it was always giving back mm -hmm. and then uh in 2013 i retired as uh, 32 years in the air force and uh i have a pension now as from that and then I opened up uh, Bridging the Gap for Veterans in 2016, February 2016. So here we are starting our sixth year. We're about to start here. And uh, it's been, uh, again, giving back. Right. It's uh, having a purpose-driven life is really meaningful to me. And uh, God at my core and, and family and, and my purpose now is helping others. And so I've become like this um, light worker, if you will, uh -huh. or, or a person who can help other people achieve their success. And what's by what's happening is my success is right. expanding right. 10 times right. just by helping others. Well, 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 let me, so a couple things. I mean, there's so much in your story and your background, obviously the military success you've had, but that time at Booz Allen, I, I was at Deloitte Consulting for 11 years. And yeah. when you're in those high intense kind of firms, you learn how to think, you learn how to process things, you learn how to analyze things you know, as you, 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 um, you look back on your entrepreneurial career. So if you could just take a second before we get into some of the details, how did Booz Allen kind of help you as you thought and how did the military help you as you are developing your entrepreneurial mindset? I, I think Booz Allen really gave me a, a foundation of how to understand client requirements mm -hmm. and make them myself, on, for myself to, to take those requirements as my own, as, as Booz Allen. And, and drive to success. Uh, I, with Booz Allen, you had Booz Allen and Hamilton, you had a phenomenal uh, a mentoring program of senior um, management consultants that knew exactly how to do that. So, so I, I was mentored you know, all those years on how to really develop the approach for, for client success, how to you know, deal with uh, customer relations, how to, how to write proposals, how to do business planning. And so for how to do uh, sustainable financing as well, how to project out. So it also gave me performance costs and schedule on how to lead people as well on the civilian side, how to 
drive schedules to what the client wants and do it under under a good budget as well. Mm. And then with the military, it was all about leadership. Right. It was all about how you take care of people. So what I learned from the military is if you take care of your people, the mission will be the mission will run. The mission will take care of itself. You just take care of those people, get the obstacles out of their way, and uh, your mission will be successful. Wonderful. The, the uh, and now now the bridging the gap. This is really bridging the gap uh, 2.0. Right, because the, the original really talk is. about the original bridging the gap, and I was involved a little bit with that, and your your kind of training and placement. You were doing an incredible job doing that. What was your idea there, and, and how did that work? So, so the idea was really to open up a door for veterans and family members, instead of just using a job board, be able to have a face to face interaction with someone who's hiring. Mm -hmm. And many many times, you know, you got to go to the job boards on on the internet and find out who's hiring and so forth. And that's all Department of Labor, it's all accounted for and so forth. But the old fashioned way of networking, a lot of military people do not know how to do that mm -hmm. because you don't have to network in the military because you, you have a chain of command and you know your departments. And so it wasn't really one where people took, to, uh, really understood how to do this. So what I came up with was a strategy of, of why not if we teach people the tactics on how to find a job mm -hmm. and then show them how to find that job by bringing in corporations and then speed interviewing with those corporations. And so this was grassroots level on military installations. We still do it today, except for right now we're doing a webinar. Right. And, and we help people get a door open. So now you have seven minutes with an employer, but then you got to rotate to the next one, like a volleyball game or a speed dating or whatever you want to call it. Right. And, you, you're looking at 15 companies in one day. That's 15 interviews. And out of those 15 interviews, you, you're bound to get a, a job offer that, or a company you want to work with. And many, many times that happens. So we employed over 600 people that way. Thousands have been through my class. And now we're going around the country doing this. And, and today, via the pandemic, we're doing it a little different. We pivoted on that. So we have a monthly career transition program. And we just do it for about an hour and a half. And we showcase one company at a time and why they want to hire veterans. We teach them a little bit as well. And then after it's over, then they work with me one-on-one -on -one as a career coach. Well, so Bridging the Gap to, you know, is really the, the, the foundation of, of how to find a career. Well, well, one of the things that I went to uh, a couple of the sessions that I, I really was intrigued with is the different modules you had. You even had an actress teaching you know how to how to speak and communicate. Talk about the, for the audience. Talk about the modules that you had sure. for the program. So, so we I came up with this theme, this construct, if you will, this framework called Ignite. Because mm -hmm. in the military, everything is an acronym, and we need to have acronyms, otherwise we can't speak. In the military. <laughs> so, so we started with with the I is identify your natural skills and abilities, understanding who you are and what you want to do. Mm -hmm. Many many veterans don't don't know what they want to do. Get focused and get a mentor. Mentorship is important, and we have companies that do that for a living, and we, we pipeline those candidates to those companies. Network using social media. A lot of people don't know how to find the really master LinkedIn or even social media at in general, and we help do that. We help build their, their profiles and so forth. And then identify career fair tactics. So when you go into a career fair or you're going to go interview, we show you techniques on how to do that. So you prepare before, during, and after. You know, things like a follow-up letter, mm -hmm. uh, a you know, maybe a, a card mailed to the employer. Mm -hmm. And then trans transform and fireproof your resume. We go into the resume, we blow it up, and we write the resume for them. Mm -hmm. But we show them what a good resume looks like and then and get them, you know, to, uh, to uh, send over content for us. And then lastly, be employment ready or entrepreneurship. And that last piece, the E, is important because many times people um, don't know how to use those job boards and don't know how to reach out to people to, to kind of get get that last mile closed. And we help them do that as well, we show them secrets to that. But we added another E, which is, is entrepreneurship. Because what I'm seeing after being an entrepreneur now is there's people out there who have some phenomenal ideas. They, they just don't know how to go to the next step. Mm -hmm. And maybe something like a venture, veterans launching ventures would be the first step for that. So uh, 
it's it's been working well for us at Ignite Strategy, and uh, and we're so far we're, we're constantly uh, getting a good amount of people c coming out and joining us. Well, I, I, I'm going to talk in a minute about veterans launching ventures, but one of the things that really really was intriguing about bridging the gap, you know, 1.0 was not only did you get sponsors, but you got people who were ready to hire really almost on the spot. Right. So, so it was real, and I love, you, you know, you weren't wasting time, you know, learn how to interview, be ready to interview, and then interview all within yeah. the same session. Talk a little bit about that. So, so in the class, we actually have corporations. And so, so when you come at 9 o'clock in the morning, you may be sitting next to Prudential, maybe Bristol Myers, maybe your, uh, Earl Construction, or another company, Coca-Cola. And, and people don't even realize it. And what, what's great about that is they're answering questions uh, and asking questions to the candidates while we're in the class. Mm -hmm. so, so for those hour, hour and a half or so that we were teaching, people could really learn behind the curtain on how to find that job. And understand, like, for instance, how should I use LinkedIn on the job portal to maximize my job exposure, my, my, you know, my resume? You would hear that from that answer from an HR person from Prudential. How do they use LinkedIn to find you? So, so those kinds of things are so intriguing. And some little tidbits as well. Like, for instance, I introduced them what, what job scan is. People don't know what job scan is. Job scan is... It's like a portal where you can upload your the job description and upload your resume, and it does a convert, and it sees where you're missing your experience and, and seeing what, it's like a dashboard. It'll tell you if you're qualified for that job or not. And, and then you can fix your resume accordingly. So, so those kind of tips that we, we share. Yeah, I mean, it really is, is so innovative, and, and the, the employers are sitting there watching the interaction. Yeah. You know, watching how engaged somebody is in the class and so on, which makes them even more engaged because they know yeah. I better be engaged. If I want a job, I better be engaged. So, so it really so, so, helps. Uh, so it's not a career fair. Right. So, so we're really learning and then in implementing. Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, anybody knows me, I, you know, I love time management. I love doing multiple things at the same time. We only have so much time. And I, we get along so well because you're the same, you're the same, same, uh, same way. The, same way. Uh, so, so uh, um, the audience, you know, may not know, I'm a professor and uh, the executive director of the Fairleigh Dickinson University Rothman Institute of Innovation and Entrepreneurship. And one of the programs, uh, we have a family business program. We also have a Veterans Launching Ventures entrepreneurship program for veterans. And, and Mike um, is one of our illustrious graduates who went through the program and uh, the eight-week program that helped take people through a business plan and, and, uh, and do that. So, Mike, talk a little bit about the Veterans Launching Ventures from the, from the student standpoint. So, so, I was thrilled to be part of it because it was the perfect timing for me to engage on this. One is we were just into the pandemic, and I wanted to retool while I had the time to, to optimize my business plan. Had a business plan already, but it was more um, passive. I wasn't really active with it, and I wanted to dust it off and see where I can take bridging the gap with our new coffee program. And so uh, we had a business to business program called Adopt a Coffee Platoon that was supporting uh, financially bridging the gap and all our career programs. Uh, companies would buy our coffee and then, and we would help also help them find veterans. And then we would donate that coffee to a military unit or a first responder mm -hmm. and it was going very, very well. But, but my business plan was really not associated that way. I didn't really have it up to date, updated. So going to the Veterans Launching Adventures Program, being a candidate, allowed me to articulate what my goals are further. It allowed me to really look at my pro forma to see what my financial projections would be and also what I have currently. And then also it really articulated me to be more focused on implementation and operations as well. I had a great mentor. Uh, who helped me kind of ask key questions and helped me guide me through this. But what I also learned was from the other students on some of the things that they were doing as well. Well, well and so we're gonna uh, we're gonna take a break. We're um, you know we're halfway through, and then we're gonna come back and finish up with veterans launching ventures. And I really want to talk about the 2.0, how you decided that, and how you've been successful. So Sounds good. we'll see you all after the break.
boardwalks built for fun. Legendary rock and roll clubs. This is how we do it. Casinos by the ocean. Now that's New Jersey. 130 miles of beautiful beaches, solid rock, and everything in between. Now that's New Jersey. Plan your New Jersey trip at visitnj.org. Waves of fun. Nights of excitement. And a trail of memories. Now that's New Jersey. This is uh, Dale Caldwell. Welcome back to Entrepreneur State of Mind. I have Mike Ferraro, the president and founder of Bridging the Gap. We were just talking about his participation in the Veterans Launching Ventures program, which uh, at Fairleigh Dickinson Rothman Institute that we, uh, we run. It actually, uh, you know, Mike, we had 25 different states represented in the most recent class, so which is, uh, which is great. And so in that program, you were saying something about the interaction with other classmates and the mentors. Yeah, you know, it was great to see what other people were coming up with as far as their goals and, and dreams of being an entrepreneur. Uh, some of the questions that were asked as well were very intuitive. Uh, but the instructors were fantastic. Every every week we had a great uh, forum of uh, learning of, of a different topic. And it was all in line of the business planning. But it was great to also hear from p previous folks as well who've been through the class and talk about their success and, and how they did it. And... Um, Give, it gives you motivation and inspiration as well. Yeah, well, well, thank you so much. And, and it's amazing how that program has gone. And, and frankly, the Zoom has really helped us to become a national program. So, so, you know, going back a little bit, you have this Bridging the Gap, you know, employment program. It's doing really, really well. You, are, you just have a skill at getting some incredible sponsors. So, so where did coffee come into this? How did coffee come into uh, your, your mindset? Well, coffee and careers mm -hmm. goes, goes hand in hand. Right, right. So, so what happened was uh, years ago, I used to be a silent partner in a company that was a coffee company in Phoenix, Arizona. Mm. I got out of it. And, and then in, in 2017 or so, I started thinking about, you know, maybe I should kind of go back into that a little bit as a silent partner mm. and find something on the East Coast. I was always intrigued with coffee roasting and coffee uh, in general. And so... Um, I've learned in the last couple of years that uh, as a nonprofit, because Bridging the Gap for Veterans is a, is a 501c3 mm -hmm. in, the, in the last five years or so. And so um, when I kept, kept on buying products from Newman's Own, Paul Newman, right. when he created Newman's Own, and I said, you know, he's got coffee, he's helping a lot of different charities out. I wonder if we could do something similar because it's a sustainable model mm -hmm. and everybody likes coffee. Many people like coffee mm -hmm. and maybe there's something there. So I contacted the IRS, found out that I can sell a product as a nonprofit mm -hmm. as long as it supports the mission and my expenses are you know specific that way, then we could do it. So then I searched for a, uh, a, a roaster that's local to me here in New Jersey and I was able to find a roaster that's in Bricktown, New Jersey, mm. and they do private label. And they were very intrigued with what I wanted to do because they don't have a military uh, or patriotic kind of brand. And so they said they can roast my, the coffee for me, put my label, my logo on the bag, mm. on the box, as you can see here. Ah, oh, okay. And I, I don't know if you can see it probably backwards. I'm not sure if you can yeah, see yeah, it. Yeah, we can see it. Adopt it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll, yeah you know, we'll talk some more about and, that. And, and so what, what we have uh, now, we have bags, we have K-cups, we have uh, um, beans as well. Uh, and so now what, what happened was we started the Adopt-A-Coffee platoon model, 
which is getting companies to buy the coffee and donate. Mm -hmm. And then that grew, because that started around November 2019. Mm -hmm. And then that grew to we are today, the coffee platoon. So the coffee platoon is really made up of a variety of uh, coffee products that we have. And now we're selling it in supermarkets. Well, but, but so your coffee we're not, we're not just in in um, in businesses buying it right. to donate. Now we're selling it for retail, just like Paul Newman sells his coffee. Wonderful. And, the, uh, so and, the coffee must be pretty good, Mike. I mean, there must yeah, be something be. special about the coffee that 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 people are buying. What's your what's the secret sauce? Why is this coffee so good? Well, one is we use uh, fair trade. We, we use uh, fair trade coffee, okay. Arabica. Uh -huh. We also uh, have it blended, so it's, it's uh, Colombian beans, right. and they blend it with other kinds of beans as well to give it a very distinct flavor. And uh, it's almost got like a little, you can hint a little chocolate right. flavor sometimes. Uh, the, sometimes the nuts give that, that flavor off. Wow. But people love it because I, I blend it such that I have my own recipe. I have a dark roast and I have a mild roast. Right. I keep it simple. But we blend the, the names after the military. Okay. So we have the Army Strong, and nice. we have the Semper Fi, nice. and we have the Yinkers Away, and the Aim High, and so forth, and Freedom Blend for decaf. So, so now I have 21 different UPCs, 21 different SKUs right. that I can now offer to the supermarkets, wow. and, and now we're growing that as well. Soon we're going to have steel cans. I have cans coming out. In the springtime. Well, let me, let me, so, 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 you know, entrepreneur state of mind. So people say, well, you got to have a for profit. You can't be an entrepreneur without a, with a, if you don't have a for profit. Listen to Mike Ferraro. He is the epitome of uh, as much. A, he's as much an entrepreneur as anybody that has a, 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 a billion dollar business. And so the mindset. It's the entrepreneurial mindset that you uh, that you have. And so your work is, you know, how many how many how many grocery stores are you in now? How how has it grown? So, so we started with five here in Monmouth County. Okay. We were able to get five circus food towns because the Scaduto family actually believed in what we were doing. They loved the model, and they said, we want to, we want to back it. So immediately I got five supermarkets. Wow. We started, we started going into those supermarkets September 14th of last year. Wow. Six months ago. And, Six months. And now, as of today, we are in 51 supermarkets. Uh, we just got 23 more. Uh, this past Friday in Sarah. Uh, so what's happened is all the family owners of the co-op in ShopRites are hearing about our product and they want it in their store. So little by little, we're going to get into all the Wakefern uh, ShopRites uh, and what? there's almost 300 of them. Well, it doesn't sound little by little. I mean, five to 51 in six months, that is an incredible entrepreneurial story and entrepreneurial success and, and congrats. Congrats, Mike. And, and so when they see it, do they, they, uh, they really see how it's helping uh, military veterans, people who've served our country, and that's the, you know, what's your unique selling proposition, as they would, as they would say? Uh, selling to the value prop to the, uh, to the stores mm -hmm. is that we have three areas that we support. Mm -hmm. local, first of all, it's local impact. Right. So it's in the tri-state area. Right. Uh, so, so that's where the, 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 the mission of the Bridge the Gap, they see that. Uh, two is it's a uh, military and very patriotic uh, cause, and right now we need that in our country. Yeah. And three is the fact that the price point is very competitive, very reasonable, uh, you know, cost for bags. Mm -hmm. They're selling it for six ninety nine, six dollars and ninety nine cents, and so very com very competitive to buying other kinds of coffee. But what we've also find is is the colors that we use, the red, white, and blue. It, and yeah, and the box, it, yeah. it really does attract people to take a look at it and say, "Huh, this is this is something different." You know, yeah. Supporting first responders and, and the military. No, no, what does it say yeah. on, on the top? So uh, hold the box up again. So uh, um, so we have. So the, now, what does it say on the flap? So bridging the gap at the top. Bridging the gap. Yeah, bri bridging the gap opens career doors to corporate America and businesses preparing all military and veteran candidates for a successful career transition. So that's a quote up Wonderful. top here. Wonderful. Okay. And then bridging the gap coffee. So so adopt a coffee platoon. So this this box here was set up originally for uh, corporate America. Okay. So 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 now it's called. We have other ones that say the, the uh, coffee platoon. Okay. And bags as well, and soon to be steel cans. But okay. the other piece of the of the value prop, and this is the important piece, they see where the money's going to support veterans right. and career programs. They see that every month. Also, 
We're giving out scholarships now mm -hmm. because we have retail money. We want to help those people who want to be police officers. Because when you go to the police academy, you don't get paid. Right. So for 22 oh, really? weeks, you're not getting paid. Wow. And so we want to give them a scholarship for that. And then the last one is we're buying service dogs. Okay. And so now we're, we're engaged with VetDogs.org, a national company, and helping uh, support them as well. So, so it's exciting. It says they see the impact. Well, again, entrepreneur state of mind. I mean, that that is this is the epitome. You're creating jobs. You're growing. You're growing a business. You're helping people. You're serving veterans. You know. Now, are you looking nationally? Or are you looking to? Uh, we're almost at the end of time. But uh, what, what's the national plan? So, the, so my footprint is this: if I can stay focused in the Wake Forest community, and and that's five states. So my goal is in the next 18 months to stay and dominate the Wake Forest uh, supermarkets. Mm -hmm. And then set up regional areas where then I can grow. So head south, and so I want to be able to to be able to hire uh, people who want to work with me on this, and and they would own a region, and so we'll have regional managers. So we're, wow. we're building out a framework here that's going to take us south. Eventually, we will we'll go west, mm -hmm. but I think right now we're gonna, we're dominating the tri-state area. Well, Mike, we are at the end of time. Um, it is so wonderful to reconnect. Um, I, you know, I learn something every time we talk. Uh, you are the model entrepreneur, so congrats if I can help you anyway. And for the audience, make sure you find the coffee platoon in your local grocery store. If it's not there, ask for it. So, Mike, thank you, thank you, thank you very much, and I want to thank everybody watching for watching Entrepreneur State of Mind. Take care. We'll see you at thank the you. next show.